Hello, Cockshot fans. John Crofts here. Just going to give a little story about my 1956 Model 30 and a uh, little update on the uh, alternator upgrade that I did. I had some still photographs showing the bracket and discussing uh, some of the details, wiring and the pulley and that. And uh, I'm quite pleased with it the way it is and got other things to do, so I'm just going to leave it. Now, uh, the way it works is uh, the energizing the field, that's connected directly to the, uh, to the switch, the ignition switch. So I'll turn that on give it some choke. I did have it running a little earlier and uh, we'll kind of go with the ammeter here to see how it works. I normally uh, you know give it a few clicks on the throttle and then you can see it's discharging now if you can see that on the ammeter make, oops, always make sure it's in neutral I'm just standing on the hitch here and uh, let's see what happens. Okay, you can see now at this speed, the alternator kicks right in, getting a good 10 amps, and it'll quickly uh, charge the battery and drop back down. So. shuts off fine. So, to make it work better, I would have to go to a smaller pulley so it charged, you know, at the lower speed. But then I would have to uh, have a way of disconnecting the field. And my plan was, if I ever went that far, I would just put a toggle switch up next to the dash or the instrument panel probably on the other side and uh, make a little plate that says you know on for uh, running and charging off for cranking and shut down and I did try it with a uh, a charge indicator lamp but <clears throat> I kept this uh, six volts I don't know if you can see the battery in there and uh, <clears throat> of course this was a 12 volt alternator but I got a uh, replacement uh, 6 volt regulator and put it inside but of course now all it gets is that 6 or 7 volts to the field and anything to drop that down like a diode you'd lose uh, 7 tenths of a volt barrier potential across the silicon diode or e maybe even more across a charge lamp indicator and I would have to rev the engine even higher to get it to start charging and like I said I did try that initially uh, with an indicator lamp and didn't like it and with the toggle switch then say I had a kind of a weak battery from sitting a long time then uh, the switch I could actually shut it off so that field wouldn't be pulling any more uh, off the battery and everything would be left uh, for the coil and of course the cranking motor. So this, like I said, 1956 and I bought this tractor uh, from a co-worker, it was his dad's and his dad was getting old and couldn't climb up and down on it too easily. Uh, he had a little 8 in, 
and so his dad uh, that's the only one he used and I bought it we we initially had uh, about five acres here and uh, I planted it all in trees so I don't need to mow so much but I've also had a grader blade and a box blade done a lot of landscaping around the place and now basically what I do is uh, I'm harvesting the trees all our ash are dying from the emerald ash borer so I've got a boom pole I put on the three-point hitch and then I just recently made this trailer hitch because I hated taking the three-point hitch off to haul uh, all my wagon around with and uh, for the firewood so it's basically now the wagon for firewood and the boom pole for uh, these ash poles. I'm saving a few there, maybe make a shelter or pole barn in the future. I do have a couple other partial 30s that one under the tarp uh, has original paint. It's a little older. Um, it does have hydraulics but no three-point hitch. I've got all the brackets uh, for the mounted cultivator for that and you can see there's kind of a contraption. There's a the front end of a 30 on a old sprayer frame and that was put together actually as a 4-H project, large engine project for some 4-Hers and never done anything with it. Then also have a co-op version. I bought that because it had a uh, Wagner loader on it. Uh, I don't know what's happened to the front end, probably overloaded from the loader and then got water in it or something but uh, the steering box is all busted and I actually sold this years ago, but the guys never come to pick it up. Um, well, back to my tractor. So it's kind of the later model for a 56. It's got the what looked to be a little heavier duty hub. It's got the uh, enclosed um, shoe brakes and the weighted front hubs. Um, also, you saw the three-point hitch and the needler seat. So, uh, Phil Hanner, the guy that sold it to me, told me that when they bought it, uh, this must have been an unscrupulous used tractor dealer, but turns out that the crankshaft was broken. But the way the brake was in the crankshaft, it laid together and it would still start and run. But they knew something was wrong and they ended up uh, replacing the crankshaft. But I think that's just a little bit of interesting history to it. Uh, also, these are actually um, the water base or the water slip-on decals that uh, a friend of mine had bought for a, for a project and never used. So I just did the sheet metal. Uh, probably didn't match the paint properly and uh, now I'm regretting that I ran out of the red paint and the primers kind of gone bad on the back side of the fenders so one of these days I'm gonna, I'm gonna address that. Um, you can see my most recent project uh, enjoyed getting the welder out and uh, I converted an old uh, trailer hitch off a car into this three-point hitch uh, version just cut the ends off and had a couple of pins and uh, welded those on but I don't really like the way it handles it's so long now with the ball being back that far that it backs up uh, a little different than uh, than what I'm used to um, but it is nice not to have to continuously change between the three-point hitch for the boom pole and take that off and then put a ball on the tongue I didn't really have all the original parts, so some of the stuff's kind of cobbled up. The sway link there uh, is cobbled up, and then I actually kind of reinforced or made a new uh, top link uh, weldment there. Anyway, that's uh, that's a lot of what I can just think of off the off the bat. I uh, hope you enjoy this. Thank you. Okay, I thought of uh, another little story about my cockshut tractor. So f for the first few years, uh, burned a lot of oil. And uh, just got a still photo here of my brother-in-law 
Richard uh, mowing our uh, <clears throat> our acreage be long before the trees were planted, or at least a few years before the trees were planted. And I'm not sure you can see kind of a light blue hazy smoke coming out of the uh, tractor exhaust. Um, but anyway, it was so bad that I had to add a quart of oil um, before I could complete about three acres of, uh, of mowing like this. And usually one or two stops to clean off the fouled spark plugs. So I decided to tear into it and see what it was. And uh, it was the rings. And the oil rings were the three-piece design where you have the two thin ones with an expander ring. And I remember with the connecting rod loose, you could just take the whole piston assembly, of course the cylinder heads off, and you could just slide it down, just let gravity, it would pull it down and it would go right past the oil ring and land on the first compression ring. Uh, they were just completely worn to where that expander wasn't holding it out at all. So that was an easy fix. I just used a glaze breaker and uh, cleaned up the liners, didn't change the liners or anything. New set of rings and just lapped the valves and it's run great ever since. Now I go literally years without uh, changing the oil, without the oil getting any color because I put so few hours on it now and never have any trouble with spark plugs or anything like that. Just thought I'd add that little story. Thank you.